And, and there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. And, and a lot of people think that there's, you know, you can be saved and you can walk in the Spirit part of the time, but then you can walk in the flesh. And that is not right. I'm going to show you in a minute it's not right. You're either saved, and if you're saved, it's called being in the Spirit, or you're lost, and if you're lost, it's called being in the flesh. And, and verse 9 is going to show us that clearly. Uh, it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Say that. I'm free from the law of sin and death. Y'all didn't want to do that? Let's try it one more time. I'm, I'm, I've been made free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. So if he condemned sin in my flesh, in my members, how can, how can we figure that out? He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There it is again. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, how many of you have a carnal mind? I hope not, I'm not going to look. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now here's verse 9. Uh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. He's lost and in darkness. That's inserted by me. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, uh, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So, gosh, our, our body's dead because of sin, right? Wow. But look what it says. It says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Hello? He gives life to our bodies. That doesn't mean we're going to die. We had sin and we got Adam's sin and, and we got a limit on how long we're going to live. But if we understand the law properly and that we're under grace and not law, we can have better lives on this earth. Amen? And we can serve God and we can be servants of the Most High God. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, and that, that word debtors means obligated, we are, we are obligated not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if I live according to the flesh, I will die. But if by the Spirit you're putting, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now, this is, a, this is a good scripture right here. That ought to go in some of our refrigerators. And the reason why is uh, you may not be thinking it consciously, but if, if you're trying to, to live right and, and do right and do what God wants you to do and you're and you're trying to, to not do the things that hurt people or the things that, that are wrong or the things that, that keep you from serving God fully, uh, most of us, when we're doing that, we're trying to do it by the flesh. And the flesh can't get over the flesh. You understand that? It says right here, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you'll live. And when you are saved and the Spirit of God is in you, and you get, you get through thinking about sin and not sinning, and you start thinking fully about being a slave to God and a slave to righteousness, and you start studying the Word, and you start learning what, the, what He wants us to do, and you start obeying what you see in the Word and obeying what Jesus said, you're putting to death the deeds of the flesh in the Spirit at that point in time. And I'm here to tell you, uh, as a personal testimony, when you do it that way, it works. And that don't mean I'm perfect, but it means there's a whole lot of things that I used to do that I didn't try to quit doing. They just went away. They just left. They just departed from me. Amen? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the Spirit 
of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And then I skip down to verse 28 to save some time. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. Now, uh, what's love? It's how you act. So those who act right to God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, how many of y'all were predestined to be in the kingdom of God? Not all of you. Some of you weren't. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway. Uh, whom he, these, whom, whom he predestined, these he also called. And whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorifies. Amen? Next one. For what then shall I say to these things? If God is for me, who can be against me? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all for our sin, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It's Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. God, Jesus is right there by the, by the, by the head judge of the supreme universe, and, and he's the one that pleads our case. And the only plead he can make is God... I died for that. I, that's forgiven. That's, that's, that doesn't count anymore. And I took him out from under the law with my blood, with my suffering. Uh, as it is written, you, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If you're not conquering the majority of the time, you need to check yourself out, okay? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Next one. Hebrews, we're going to give you a few follow-up scriptures to, to kind of help you understand the totality of it. For the law, having been a shadow of good things to come and not, very, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For, when they, for then they would not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers, once purged, should have no should have sh should have had no more consciousness of sin, but those in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again uh, made of sins every year, and and that's one of the the biggest points that I'm trying to make today is if you have a consciousness of sin and you're worried about sin and you're thinking about not sinning, then then you have a sin consciousness, and I believe when we come to the place where where we totally believe that Jesus took away all of our sins on the cross, and when we totally believe that he took us out from under the law in our entirety, that, that we don't even have to need to think about sin. And the less we think about sin, the more the chains are removed from us, the more we're free, the more we're, we're, we're loving him, the more we're wanting to do it his way, the more we're wanting to obey him. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And in another place he said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments, and they're not burdensome to you. And, and the only way I know to get there is to realize that we're not under the law. And the more you love Jesus, the more you want, the more, the more you know what he really did for you, the more you love him. And the more you love him, the more you want to do everything that he said as much as possible. Amen? Uh, there's a remembrance every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. 
Then he said, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he's talking, he's talking about before, above when he said sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and, and uh, offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had his pleasure in them which are offered by the law. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, taketh away the first what? The first covenant? He taketh away the first covenant that the second may be established. By the which we, by the which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ Jesus once for all. And I believe that means once for all people and once for all time. There is no other sacrifice for sin other than the blood of Jesus. You try to come any other way and you're doomed. Uh, and every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering Oft times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins. A little louder, please, if you really mean it. Forever. That's what we have to know. We have to know he took away our sins forever. And if he took them away forever, why would I ever have to confess them again? Why would I ever have to worry about it? I, I just can love him and I can just be so excited about him that I'll just get silly with obeying him. He sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected how long? Them that are sanctified. How many of you are sanctified? Wherefore the Holy Ghost also witnessed to us for after that he had said before this is the covenant that I will make with them after these days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. And their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. Say this, my sins and iniquity he will remember no more. Do you believe that? Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. How many of you can draw near in heart, crawl up in Jesus' lap, crawl up in God's lap, curl up, after you've done the worst thing that you do now that you're not under the law and, and sit in his lap knowing that he's going to wrap his arms around you and comfort you. We have to be to that place. On our, messed worse, on our, our worst mess ups, uh, we, we, we don't run from God. When you know, if you don't know God very good and, and you, you slip up and you stump your toe and you say a real bad word, uh, if you don't know God very well, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna say, Where, "Where's God?" You know, I've, you, you're not gonna run to His lap. But if you know Him, and you know that He's already taken care of it, He's already paid for it. You can run and get in His lap, and crawl up in His lap, and say, "Oh Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. I love you so much." You hear me? Uh, with a true heart in full assurance, that's what I'm talking about, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Uh, I believe it includes our bodies, not just our spirit. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto good, to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, uh, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're supposed to be exhorting each other to, to love and good works and, and we're supposed to, to love each other and act right to each other all the time. First uh, John 3, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he, Jesus, was manifested to take away the sins, and in him there is no sin. Do you know that if you're living in him, that that says there is no sin for you? 
That's what it says. In him there is no sin. Are you in him? Is he in you? Then there's no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever, whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Guys, that's the word of God. And the only way that that can be a true statement, and that's one of the ways that I figured it out, uh, I, said, I said, that just can't be. And then one day it dawned on me, unless I'm not under the law, that's the only way I cannot sin, if I'm not under the law. And the scriptures replete telling me I'm dead to the law, I'm not under the law. The law doesn't apply to me anymore. Amen? Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. He who is, just as he is righteous. How righteous is Jesus? He's totally righteous. How righteous are you? What? How righteous are you? All right, thank you. Uh, he who sins is from the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Woo! You know what love means, don't you? Thank goodness, thank goodness that it doesn't mean that we have to have this gooey affection and, and deep emotion about our neighbor. It doesn't say that. It says you have to love him, and that means you have to act right to him no matter how you feel or what he's done to you. Is that true or false? That's weak. Y'all are weak. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Uh, for this is the message you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain loved, uh, was of the, the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. What's going on in this world right now? The world hates Christians. You know why? Because they're evil and we're godly and they don't like it. Because, and the reason they don't like it is because they want to do all these evil things and we make them feel bad about it. Just, just by knowing that we don't do them and that we love God and that God says don't do them, it makes them hate us. Amen? Um, whoever hates us, let me see. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts his heart to him, how does the word love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and, we, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if God, for if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Uh, if, if your heart condemns you, what does that mean? What, what does it say? Back up one more. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. What is that, what is, how does that happen? I think that happens because, because we think we did something wrong and we're not sure how God handles that and, and, and we get condemned in our hearts. It's not him condemning us, it's our hearts condemning us. It's knowing that I did wrong and, and, not, and not being to make it right with you because you're who I do things wrong against. See, I can sin against y'all. But I can't sin against God because I'm not under the law. But I can sin against you. And if I sin against you and I don't come and say, I'm sorry and would you forgive me and, and let's work this out, then my heart's going to condemn me. But it says God is greater than your heart. Amen? But you still need to go and say, hey, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me for being an idiot 
and for saying whatever it was I did, you know. Right? Uh, but if our heart doesn't condemn us, hallelujah. Amen? And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. If, if you're new, we don't always preach this long, but this was a sermon that you kind of had to get to the end of. And I didn't do too bad getting, I wasn't, didn't go too long. But uh, I just, you know, I just hope that, that uh, if you have an issue with it, you don't, let it, you don't let it rattle you. Just get the notes, take it home and study it, and ask God to reveal to you whether it's right or wrong. I believe with all my heart that it's the truth. I can't see how it could not be right, but I can understand that some people might not agree with it, and there's a lot of teaching that's, that's different from this. And, uh, and we each have to come to our own opinion before God, our own conviction, not our opinion. Opinions, we talked about that. But uh, we have to come to our own conviction before God, and we have to live with our choices, you know. But, but I don't condemn you in any way if you, if you disagree with it. Just come talk about it or, or tell me you don't agree and you don't think you ever will, and it's all right, I'm still going to love you, okay? But I think it's an important uh, lesson and, and I think that it, there's freedom in it for those of us who haven't understood that we're not under the law and that we've constantly tried to get better and we just can't do it. I think there's, there's change that can be broken. So uh, I'm not sure how to end this, but uh, how many of you still glad you came to church? Amen. Praise God. Pardon? Thank you, thank you. Well, it was all God. If you notice, it, you know, I've never preached a sermon, I don't think, with this much scripture in it. But the scripture spoke for itself, and I just didn't think there was much need to, to preach around it. Some of it I just felt like it was good to point out. But, but uh, my prayer is that, is that you'll meditate on it and that God will touch your heart and that, uh, that we can all go forward. I believe that, that one of the reasons that we don't we don't see the miracles of God the way we're supposed to. There was one scripture, I don't think I got it in there, but it says when, when you get to this place, uh, you'll ask anything that, that, you, that you wish, and it'll be done for you. And I think part of the reason that we're not seeing it is because a lack of understanding of that and the lack of, of, of understand, the misunderstanding of that keeping us from total belief in everything that God says. And, and I believe if we can get this, and if we can know that we are totally righteous, totally righteous in his eyes, uh, I believe we, it'll increase our faith, and I believe we'll be able to believe him stronger and, and deeper, and I believe we'll see more miracles. I believe we'll start praying for people, and we, we pray for people, and, and we, see some, we see some healings and things, but I don't think it's anywhere near what it should be. It needs to be all the time, and, and we need to have that confidence to just be bold enough to lay hands on people expecting them to get healed and uh, and I think this is part of getting to that place I'm sure there's other things we need to learn to help us get fully there but I'm committed to studying and learning so anyway I'm not going to carry on if, if anybody wants to uh, to be prayed for uh, you can come up here after the service and I'll be glad to, to pray for you and help you or answer any questions and and if you want to get together and talk about it you know at any point in time and ask me questions about it, I'll be glad to try to answer them. But we do have, uh, I think we got about a dozen of these. I didn't print out a whole lot because I printed it in color, and I didn't want to waste all the color. And if, you, if we run out, uh, D's here, and you just tell her, and she'll go print some more. And, uh, and if, if we run out and you want it, uh, I can email it to you if, you if you email me and ask for it. So if you want these to study and to look at, that's good. My wife makes a suggestion. Uh, she said, pray for us that, that the Holy Spirit will show us about it ourselves. Anybody want to hear that prayer? Want to pray it with me? Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to open my heart and my mind I ask you to get rid of all of my opinions and replace them with your truth. And God, help me always 
to be able to lay my opinions aside and receive your truth at every point. So Holy Spirit, show me. You, it, the Bible says you're my teacher. So you teach me about this word and about these scriptures. And you teach me that I'm, that I'm free from the law and that you love me no matter what. And, and help that to want me to, to obey you more and to know you better and to love you more. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, uh, y'all come back now, you hear?